Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to another video, and today we're going to be doing a review of the T-Motor F60 Pro 3 1750 kV for 6S. So I was just in the middle of assembling a new race quad with my Nexus frame here. I'm um, just about to get ready to install the motors, so I thought I might as well do this quick intro so I can get a weight on them, etc. before we put them on the quad. So this is one of T-Motor's newest offerings, the F60 Pro 3. So they just come in these pretty typical uh, round boxes from T-Motor. Very nice packaging with a few stickers. The motor all wrapped up in this special awesome looking red here. Of course, you get your lock nut and screws for the motor. And if you look in the bag, something that is extremely nice with these, hopefully you can tell it comes with a set of 6mm and 7mm screws. So if you're using 4mm arms, you can use the 6mm screws. And if you're using 5mm arms, which many typical race frames use, you can use the 7mm, so that way they stick up 2mm into the motor and provide a lot of grip. Most motors still come with only 6mm, which is kind of annoying because you get very little grip on the motor and it can strip out in a hard crash. So it's really nice to see them including both options of screws here, as well as hopefully you can see there is a little, you can't really see it, the uh, this little washer hanging out here and that goes underneath for the set screw. That's pretty much it for what comes in the box. We can take a look at the motor itself. Pretty familiar T-Motor design. Here you can see it says F60 Pro 3. These are the 1750 uh, kV versions for 6S. Taking a look at the bottoms, just like the F40 Pro line, you can see the multi-stranded high temperature winding. Um, it has the silver core with the special coating on the outside to make it more temperature resistant. We have the curved magnets, and this is supposed to be a 2207 stator size, although the last version was 2207.5. At the bottom, you can see we do have the 1.5 millimeter uh, set screw with that little washer that I mentioned the spare with. We have our 16 by 16 millimeter base in the 7075 aluminum. Go ahead and remove the set screw here. It actually was pretty difficult to remove at first, but it is a nice deep um, thread for the 1.5 driver to go into. You can see there was a decent bit of Loctite. Uh, if that'll focus there. However, it wasn't so stiff that I wasn't able to get it off without heating it up with my iron. Definitely very nice. Okay, so there we go. I went ahead and got the bell off. It was a little bit stiff. I think there was a little bit of Loctite that ran over. You can see, hopefully, there's a little layer there. Um, got onto the bottom there, but you can take a look at the bell. Once again, curved magnets. You can see the underneath design, and you can see that they do stick with the 4 millimeter shaft going in, so it's not 3 millimeters, so that's very nice. And we do have, I think these actually might be 8 millimeter bearings. Okay, now taking my uh, calipers here, they are 9mm bearings, so that is nice. I was a little scared for a second thinking they were 8mm. So interestingly enough, it is coming in, just like I said, the earlier version was about a 7.5. This is about coming in about 7.6, 7.7. So it is slightly bigger than a 2207, so it's in that little mid-range between 2208 and 2207. So it should be interesting to see how it performs. Looking at the bell design, very sleek as always with T-Motor designs. We have the serration up top to help prevent your prop from slipping as well as we do have the hollow titanium shaft. Okay, so just real quick for the motor weight with short wires, put that on there, it's about 33 grams, so definitely is not the lightest of motors, but once again, it's almost a 22.8 size stator, with the full length of wires coming up to 35.7, and then if you include the prop nut, 36.3. So let me go ahead and get them on this quad. All right, here we are back after installing the T-Motors and running them for a couple weeks. So I'm just gonna kinda hold it off to the side and talk about the flight performance and experience I've had with them so far while I run some DVR up in the right-hand corner there. So right away when I put them on, these they, they say they're 1750 kV, but on the very first punch out, I was like, wow. These were probably the strongest 5-inch motors I've ever flown. I was really curious as to why, because when I had the original F60 version 2, um, it actually wasn't that impressed, but these version 3 really, really knocked my socks off in terms of power. So I looked on Mini Quad Test Bench, and turns out they test at about 1840 kV instead of the rated 1750 kV, so they are much higher kV um, for 6S than my other quads, which is definitely why they're making that extra power. So I originally tried the T-Motor 5147 props on them since they're lower pitch, um, and it worked pretty well. It just wasn't as much power as it used to, so I've swapped back to these GemFan 5149.9, and this thing just absolutely hauls on the race course. 
Um, in terms of the amp draw, it definitely is more power hungry than my other setups. Um, so maybe limiting to an 85% throttle would be good for these guys. In terms of the durability, I, I smacked these on metal gates, PVC gates. I, I crashed this guy actually a lot on a couple things and I slightly bent, I don't think you guys would be able to see it. I slightly, slightly bent this front left motor here, um, but it still flies perfectly fine. Just a little bit more vibration, but you don't really care about that when you are racing. So let's get to the elephant in the room. Why is this prop in off and this motor desoldered here? So at International Open, I actually smoked this motor. Let's see, I don't know. Up here, you can see the very edge of that um, winding there and then some other place um, down here. Um, there's a little bit of burnt winding. And I'm showing the DVR here where I hit this. I actually just clipped a wire and just like flung around. So I'm not actually sure what caused it to break. I don't think the motor overheated. Um, because it was brand new, it was a brand new flight, so they weren't heated up yet, and I've, like, trashed these before, and they've been searing hot, and they haven't burnt yet, so I think it was just sort of like an overload, and it was interesting because the ESC, that channel of the ESC died, I actually, this is a new race wire, um, I was trying to fix this, this actually blew up the race wire, it's the first time I've ever seen that, and then it also broke the motor, so it broke this entire channel, so I don't think it was the motor's fault. I think the ESC just, there was so much going on and just exploded. <laughs> so overall, I've had a pretty decent run with these motors, but once again, they are multi-stranded winding, so they will burn a tiny bit earlier than single strand, but T-Motor uses their high temperature coating on these, so that is also something to note. So yeah, that's pretty much gonna bring us to the end of this quick review for the T-Motor F60 version three. Overall, would I recommend them? Yes but also no. Yes, in the sense that I do like their power output, I do like the design, they look great in this red as well as um, the gray, but also no because they're $27 motors and that's just really expensive. You can get some pretty darn decent motors like Emacs Eco, I know the iFlight and Brother Hobby, they all just came out with cheap $14, $15 motors. So these being twice the price, I can't really recommend them for general users. If you're a big fan of T-Motor and you want to get a T-Motor motor, <laughs> T-Motor motor, uh, these are definitely something you should look into. They are fantastic in their lineup. I just think the price is a little bit too expensive and really hard to justify when there's other very good options out right now. So yeah, that's going to do it. There'll be links in the description below, as well as if you wish to help support the channel in these types of videos, I'll also link my Patreon down there. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.